Hey, what's up, YouTube? Hey, today I'm going to be doing a little bit of drawing in TV Paint 11 Pro. Uh, sort of a trying to win this very small job, which involves a lot of illustration. And you know those animations where you see a hand drawing the cartoon and it sort of appears? Uh, I'm sort of going to be doing that. Um, but I'm going to let TV Paint record the drawing and just let TV Paint play it back. Um, so... After that, I might do a little just freeform cartooning, so hang in and uh, let's go. All right, folks, here I am in TV Paint. Uh, I'm actually not using keyboard shortcuts. I'm using a Wiimote and a program called Glove Pie uh, instead of my Cintiq remote because this is easier. And I actually told Wacom about this on a trip to their headquarters in Portland a while ago, years ago, and they were taking notes and I think they copied me, so... Send me some cash, Wacom. Um, anyway, this is more ergonomic than the thing they made, and it's just more useful to me. I've got hide my interface here. I've got undo, redo, frame forward and back, and kind of a pan around the canvas here. And it works pretty well. I'll try and put a link into the description on how to do that if you want to try to make your own uh, keyboard remote using an old Wiimote. Um, $5, Goodwill. You can find these everywhere, very cheap, um, and they're great. Uh, so what I've got here is I've got um, some images I made using Procreate on my iPad and I've imported them into a 1920 by 1080 project and I'm going to be um, making a small animation uh, here. So when they're imported, if I change my background color to gray, you'll see that these are not transparent. If I were to cut this out, um, oops, using my cut brush tool, you'll see that's not transparent. Well, TV Paint has a built-in scan cleaner, so I can select those two frames uh, there and go to my effects stack. And where is that? Control panel, one second here. Let me drag it over from my other monitor. And there's the effects stack. And so I'm going to now add an effect, and that is the color scan cleaner, black and white. So that will take out all of the white and you can adjust the curve here on it to make it more or less, uh, you know, dark. And hit apply for both of those frames. And now those are transparent. I want to lighten up that background a little tiny bit. So I'm going to choose kind of a medium gray and choose background color. I tap here and then medium gray. And I'm going to dim that layer back. And I'm going to add a new layer. And I'm going to get out... Um, a brush here one second I have to import a brush so I'm gonna pause for just a moment all right there we go that's my perfect ink brush that I have which I designed um, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in a bit and just start to do my final cartoon on that top layer for this guy he is explaining stuff so I'm gonna go ahead and smooth that image a little bit there we go and actually I want my brush to be a little bit smaller I think Let's try that out. That looks pretty good. And I could even make him bigger, actually, um, on the bottom there. So I'm going to cut it out. And using my cut brush, and I'm going to move him a little bit. Um, and add another frame. And then I'm going to erase her for a second. And I'm going to use my enlarger here. Got a funny toolbar going on here. And uh, I'm going to put him right there. And I'm going to draw to my perfect ink brush, scaled down a little bit, about 60%. And I'm going to start to draw my guy there on the top layer. that and his eyeballs and do his nose really quickly not going to worry about filling in uh, the mouth right now and his ear do his other ear this is for a demo for a client so it doesn't have to be you know, exactly perfect. I'm trying to do a nice job for them, but I actually forgot. Um, they wanted this drawing to kind of draw onto the screen like magic. So I am going to erase what I just did. 
I'm going to pull out the drawing recorder panel in the custom panels menu, actually windows animation, windows drawing, drawing recorder from the drop down, which you're not seeing because it's on another monitor, but I have the drawing recorder and you're going to say, uh, we're going to say record what you're, I'm drawing on the current layer. Okay. That means it won't record the background. So now I can hit record and start to do that cartoon again. And I'll try and speed through this really fast. Eyeballs and his nose. Let's see. Something like that. It's a tongue there, I think. And we'll go with cheek, jaw, and no, this isn't a self-portrait. <laughs> it kind of is. Uh, like that. Got some eyebrows going on. They extend into his hairline, I guess. And let's see his neck. He's wearing a little collared shirt. We'll give his tie coming down. And his shirt. Chest. Other shoulder. And we have the old credit for this I always give to um, Joe Matt, the cartoonist. If you don't know his work, uh, pretty hilarious and disturbing and and good. Underground cartoons, kind of. His name is Joe Matt. And uh, in one of his comics, he has the old explainin' hand. So this is the old explainin' hand doing some explanation. And his other ear, maybe. And um, I'm going to actually use this circle tool, make a circle on a different layer, and just try and eyeball the center of where this is and drag this out. Doesn't have to be perfect, but something like that. And I'll push it into place using the pan tool. And it can cut off a little bit. I'll go in and now erase the bottom. I'm just realizing it's going to record all these steps. That's probably OK. Uh, let's see here. Boom, 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 boom. Like that. And I can go in and edit the playback on this. So now that I'm done, I'm going to hide my bottom layer. And I'm going to uh, actually I'm going to color in his mouth first. I guess I skipped doing that. And let's see. Now I'm going to hit this little page icon. And that page icon will generate all of the frames in real time uh, for my whole drawing onto one layer. It also erases uh, my other layers that I had. So what I'm going to do is double click and copy the entire timeline. I'm going to uh, control C, copy, and then I'm going to undo. And I'm going to make a new animation layer and just paste those into the top. Go paste images, OK? Uh, then I'm going to back up here and we're going to see the playback. So I'm going to uh, maybe inactivate all the layers except for this one. And you can see it play back in real time if I hit the play button. Uh, where's my little play button here? I've got a little remote control so I can hit play. You'll see it start to draw. It's way too slow. Uh, so for if this is going into a video, you're going to want to see him be drawn almost instantly as the narrator is talking. So I'm going to speed this up. And how do we do that? Uh, my video is currently at 15 frames per second. Uh, so for one second, if I want that to appear in three seconds, 
or so. I'm going to shrink this timeline up. Just grab this tail, bring it all the way back, maybe to there. 94 frames, and I'm going to say shrink, but not interpolate. If you do interpolation, you'll see actually sort of frame blending. Uh, so I'll turn off interpolate and just hit shrink and hit apply. Now it threw away most of the frames. Now this should appear pretty quickly. So playing this back. Yeah, something like that, um, except there's a lot of, uh, there's some edits I want to make in here. So if I zoom into the timeline, Right here, I'm going to cut that frame out where that blank happens. And here, where the circle is being drawn, um, don't necessarily really like that. So I'm going, to, I'm going to make an edit here. And the circle needs to, wow, okay, so there's a screw up <laughs> in my recording. I didn't really take multiple layers into account when I did this. So I'm going to copy that circle and have it be underneath the entire time. Um, and we'll see that playback now. And actually, it needs to be a version of the circle with the right cutouts in it. So um, <laughs> I'm going to edit that circle as well and turn off break instance. So and make it like that. Okay, now when I play this back and get rid of the circle animation there, it should be about right. And if I didn't want the, um, see how the drawing sort of down here extends beyond the circle? I can, I can correct that as well uh, by um, using an eraser brush, a hard eraser, and erase. See, it only happens from frame 45 or so to 73, 74. So I'm going to put a little flag down, say frame 74, and right here, where it first starts, I'm going to say right there, 50, another flag. It actually starts a couple of frames previous, but um, I'm just going to erase all in and not let my pen up. So this is all one brush stroke. So there and there. Okay. And hit undo. Now, uh, if you hit the return key in TV paint, it will repeat your one brush stroke and you can repeat that one brush stroke over several frames. So I'm going to select from here in my timeline back to about here and hit the return key. And let's see, I gotta reach around here and bam, now that's erased all through there. So now we have playback, actually missed a little portion, it's a little portion right here. I'm gonna do that, that same thing again. It's right there and hit return again. Ha. I really need to get one of those um, keyboard mounts for above this uh, Cintiq because I always need to reach around for that one key I didn't program into this. So here we go, play that back, see how it looks. Now ultimately I would want to see the um, circle drawn on as well and if I wanted to do that um, I could extend this circle out and um, for a few frames and then every time I advance a frame and make a change it's it's kind of records that change it's breaking the instance it's gonna when I draw on a frame it will create a new frame basically in the timeline that's one of the things TV paint is really good at so I'm gonna do it backwards I'm gonna start here on frame 13 and start erasing it Uh, let's see, break instances on on my bottom layer there. And just kind of remembering, I'm going to use a giant brush for this and just make it happen fast. Two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So 13 frames, and then I can scoot everything over and add a frame so it starts on a blank. Add empty instances. And uh, we'll watch that this whole thing draw on now. Okay, perfect. Now if, uh, and the, the, of course, there is a, there is a mistake here, actually. Um, the last, Circle in the wrong spot, isn't it? Okay, darn it. Um, let me fix that on the bottom first. There's a little area here. Isn't this a fascinating YouTube channel? <laughs> um, just going to go ahead and draw eyeball this little bit. All right, that's good enough. Okay, let's play that back. Hey, good enough. Uh, so that's sort of uh, doing a drawing recording in TV Paint. Save your work always. There's an auto save feature built into TV Paint. If you go to File and then Preferences, you can turn on an auto save that just reminds you to save, or one that automatically saves and makes a couple of backups of your whole project so that you don't lose your mind when the power goes out, uh, which has happened to me more times than I can count uh, in my life. So be careful, folks. Um, that's about it. Um, I think I'm going to end this now because, you know, just a short video day after Thanksgiving. Um, if you like what you saw, you know what I'm going to say? Like and subscribe. Tell your friends. Uh, and I will catch you next time. Thanks.